Hi there guys, have any of you heard of the Church of Scientology? I'm doing free stress tests today. Before we begin, I would like to thank the sponsor of this video, Quality Gains. Quality Gains is the head of five fitness centers and is the founder of the plant-based online coaching service, qualitygains.com. Links to his services are in the video description down below. Hey vegans, hope all is well. My name is Florian. I'm the manager of five fitness centers with over 10,000 regular members. I'm a certified online trainer, plus I'm one of the first to acquire the certificate for plant-based nutrition from eCorno. I'm a hardworking vegan that has the pleasure to run a business and a YouTube channel with the mission to help you unleash your true potential. On my little YouTube universe, you can find educating videos like why are vegans skinny or more abstract videos like vegan gains exposed. Don't worry, I believe Richard is one of the best of the fitness industry and I'm watching this channel since the beginning. So if you want to take a look at the video, click the link down below and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching and thanks Vegan Gains for having me. For those of you who don't know Dr. Eric Berg, the first thing you should learn about him is that he's not actually a doctor. His true profession is really acting because he pretends to be a doctor on his YouTube channel and he's really fucking good at it. His performances are honestly Academy Award worthy. Every single detail about his channel, the way he dresses, his video style, uh, it makes you think he's an actual doctor. Take his channel banner for instance. This is something a real life doctor would create. It's clean, simple, and professional, but it's not so good that it looks like it was made by someone who is in the art and entertainment industry. It looks like it was put together by a doctor who is smart enough to put something together that's clean and professional looking, even though he doesn't have any expertise in art and advertising. Uh, there are some problems with it. The resolution on some of these images, including the text, is just a little too low. He has photos of himself that are shot from plain flat angles that aren't particularly flattering, but make him look like a working professional. Uh, the photo of himself on the side has his left arm cropped out, which is a detail a doctor wouldn't really care about. And on his banner, there's only one link to his website with no social media links. Now contrast this with other fake doctors on YouTube, like not Dr. Josh Axe. His YouTube banner has a much higher resolution. It's designed in a way where it looks like someone with an art and advertising background constructed it. The composition is virtually perfect with no empty space on the image and your eyes are drawn into the center of the banner. And there are links to not only his website, but also his Google+, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and Twitter. Now, Josh Axe's channel art is very well done. It's a great advertisement for his business, 
but it just breaks the illusion. Uh, a, a real doctor wouldn't invest this much time into a YouTube channel, website, and social media. They're more interested in their actual medical practice. And when I first happened upon his channel a few years ago, I instantly knew this guy wasn't a real doctor, he's just a chiropractor. But that wasn't the case with Eric Berg. When I first saw his channel, I thought, okay, this guy's a doctor. A very stupid doctor, mind you, because he promotes butter as a health food and claims that the more bad cholesterol you have, the longer you will live. But it wasn't until I read the legal disclaimer that he puts in all of his videos that I found out that this guy is just a complete fraud and charlatan. Disclaimer, Dr. Eric Berg received his Doctor of Chiropractic degree from Palmer College of Chiropractic in 1988. For those of you who don't know what chiropractic medicine is, it's complete bullshit. You'd be better off going to a veterinarian for medical advice. A lot of people get swindled into thinking that chiropractors are actual doctors when they're absolutely not. Uh, chiropractic medicine, if you can even call it medicine, is the belief that disease is caused by improper nerve function and by manipulating the body's joints. Particularly in the spine, diseases can be cured. And of course, there is absolutely no scientific evidence supporting chiropractic medicine. As I said before, it's a belief system, not a science. And you should know that this belief system was created by Daniel David Palmer back in the late 1800s. Palmer was not a doctor or medical professional of any kind, and in several of his writings, he claims that he came up with the idea of chiropractic medicine from speaking to spiritual beings from another world, and he compares his discovery of chiropractic medicine to Miss Mary Baker Eddy, who created Christian science, which is the belief that sickness is an illusion that can be corrected by prayer alone. That's a little disconcerting that this guy who created chiropractic medicine is comparing it to the belief that disease is an illusion that can be cured by just wishing it away. He also mentions many times that chiropractic medicine is a religion and should be recognized as such, and because of his religious and spiritual experiences, he founded the Palmer College of Chiropractic in Davenport, Iowa, which is the school that Eric Berg received his chiropractic degree, if you can even call it that. So Eric Berg in no way, shape, or form is a doctor. He went to school to join what is essentially a religious cult, and he uses what is basically a fake degree to con people into thinking that he actually knows what he's talking about, and he's raking in some serious cash from doing it. According to Social Blade, over the last month he has received 11 and a half million views on his YouTube channel, and I'd say that would translate into at least $25,000 earned in the last month alone. Uh, depending on the advertising deals he's getting, he could be making more than double that amount. So this is a guy, who clearly doesn't know what he's talking about, but he does know how to make money. He's an expert in advertising and marketing himself, uh, but not an expert in medicine, nutrition, health, or fitness. Hi there, would any of you be interested in finding out what actually causes heart disease? <laughs> Oh no, I'm not a Scientologist. I'm a doctor? Some of you may have heard of me through my YouTube channel, Dr. Eric Berg, and I see that a few of you are a little concerned that eating Scientologists might put you at greater risk of heart disease because of the cholesterol. Well, you might be interested to know that having high cholesterol doesn't actually put you at greater risk of heart disease. <laughs> Now, if you watch any of his videos, Eric Berg rarely ever references any scientific sources. That might be because he just figures he can get away with saying anything he wants, because people will believe him since he's really good at pretending to be a doctor when he's really not. But I'd say the most likely reason for this is because he actually doesn't understand anything about any of the topics he covers. 
Again, um, he didn't go to medical school. He didn't learn anything in school, really. He just followed some kind of religious cult. So unsurprisingly, most of what he says is just plain untrue, yet he feels comfortable giving medical advice on cholesterol and cholesterol-lowering medications. So you need cholesterol, okay? So it's not as bad as you think. The problem with cholesterol is when you have maybe too much uh, cholesterol that goes in versus coming out, but it's overrated. Back, I would say about 20 years ago, the normal cholesterol was 225, and they arbitrarily lowered it to 200, put millions of people on cholesterol-lowering drugs. I don't know if you knew that. So the other problem is that um, now they're going down to 150 and 100, it's getting crazy. So it's the inability to kind of, they kind of take, if, if a little cholesterol might clog an artery, they go all the way to the extreme. So not Dr. Eric Berg is trying to convince us that cholesterol lowering is not important for the prevention or treatment of heart disease and targets for cholesterol lowering are far too low and doctors are over prescribing cholesterol lowering medications. And of course he provides absolutely no scientific sources supporting his claims. We're just supposed to believe him because he calls himself a doctor. First of all, the targets for lowering cholesterol are not too low as heart disease is minimal when LDL cholesterol falls below 70 milligrams per deciliter, and this is evidenced by multiple converging lines of data. This paper outlines how populations with an LDL cholesterol score below 70 milligrams per deciliter do not develop heart disease, and based on randomized controlled trial data, progression of atherosclerosis and coronary artery disease events are minimized when LDL is lowered below 70 milligrams per deciliter. And and recently, in late 2017, the Journal of the American College of Cardiology published this study which found a direct linear relationship between LDL cholesterol score and severity of atherosclerosis, and it isn't until LDL cholesterol is below 70 milligrams per deciliter does atherosclerosis become non-existent. So literally the exact opposite of what Eric Berg says is true, not only is low Lowering LDL cholesterol below 70 milligrams per deciliter the most effective way of preventing against heart disease, but aggressive cholesterol-lowering therapy is necessary for halting the progression of atherosclerosis and having the best chance of preventing cardiovascular events, including heart attacks. And if you have already had a heart attack, even more aggressive cholesterol-lowering therapy might be necessary to prevent a second, uh, which could kill you. Eric Berg here is giving advice that could literally kill people and what is he even basing this on? I didn't see him reference any medical research in this video, and according to the best data available, lowering your LDL cholesterol score below 70 milligrams per deciliter is the best way to prevent heart disease in the first place, and it's also the most effective way of preventing any future uh, cardiovascular events, including heart attacks. But uh, Eric Berg is trying to convince you, just eat butter. You know, lots of butter. That's, that's good for preventing heart disease. And he's directly contradicting his own disclaimer. I don't see how he could have a disclaimer like this in all of his videos where he says, always consult your doctor first, but in his videos, he keeps telling you not to listen to your doctor, don't take the medications they recommend that could save your fucking life, and just listen to him, a fucking quack who went into some religious cult school who tells you butter is heart healthy. I think this is a good indication that no one should listen to your fucking bullshit. So as you can see, having high cholesterol is actually a good thing. And if your doctor tells you to cut back on Scientologists because your blood work came back with high cholesterol, don't listen to him. But I am legally required to tell you to always listen to your doctor before taking my advice. <laughs> Well, you see, your doctors aren't very well educated and they simply can't be trusted. But as always, before taking any of my advice, be sure to consult your doctor first. 
Does that clear up any confusion? Now, occasionally, rather than just incoherently rambling and scribbling on his whiteboard, Eric Berg does decide to reference some research, but of course, when he does this, he severely misinterprets the study's findings. I'm not sure if he does this deliberately. He's either a complete moron, or he's, you know, deliberately being dishonest in order to appeal to his particular audience. But in the same video, he references the Framingham study, or attempts to reference the Framingham study, uh, in order to make this argument that serum cholesterol is not a significant risk factor for heart disease. Okay, so now check this out. Here's a graph of the Framingham study, which basically all of the risk factors that you get on your cholesterol reports are based on this one study. And if you've ever read the study, it's fascinating. Very, a lot of doctors have never read the study. But this is what it says. It says that when you have lower cholesterol, and by the way, on the left side here, these are the deaths, um, yearly deaths, one, two, three, four, and five, okay? And that's with people with low cholesterol and then people with high cholesterol. They're considering 270 high, 130 low, okay? <clears throat> so this is what happens. If you look at the deaths with low cholesterol, it's one out of 1,000 at 130, and it's two out of 1,000 at 270, okay? So this is what they did. They said that's an increase of 100% risk. But notice what they said. They, they used the word risk, but not rate of getting heart attacks. Risk has basically no legal definition, apparently, in this study, because it's not really a 100% increase because these are fractions. If you know anything about mathematics, going from 1 1,000 to a 2 1,000 is only an increase of an actual 0.1%. One-tenth of 1%. One That's the real rate of getting a heart attack. This, if the doctor told you that you have a 0.1% of getting a heart attack, you probably wouldn't take the medication because it's so rare. One tenth of one percent. Okay, that does not make sense. So, um, so that's that's basically how they fudged it. They use the risk factors, and you say you're at one hundred percent risk, and they have risk one, two, like a risk factors of one, two, three, and four, which. I'm still trying to figure out what it means because it's very complex and confusing. So there are multiple problems with what he just said. First of all, that graph he's referring to isn't from the Framingham study. It's from the Multiple Risk Factor Intervention or MRFIT screening follow-up study. I think he just copied this graph that someone made in a blog post without realizing his mistake. So he clearly never read the Framingham study himself. I'm still trying to figure out what it means because it's very complex and confusing. Secondly, Eric Berg is also misrepresenting the MRFIT data, and I think we can assume he didn't read this study either. According to the MRFIT primary screening study, those in the highest cholesterol quintile had 3.42 times the risk of dying from heart disease compared to those in the lowest quintile. And if you look at the actual data set that Eric Berg is referring to in his graph, Cardiovascular disease death rate for those in the lowest cholesterol group was just under 6 per thousand people, and those with a cholesterol range between 260 to 279 had a cardiovascular disease death rate of just under 15 people per thousand. So those numbers he wrote down on his whiteboard don't make any sense. They're not from any data set found in either the Framingham or the MRFIT screening studies. I don't know exactly where he would have gotten those numbers from. I'm pretty sure he just made them up. Uh, or he used Google, found a graph online that was from a blog, and he just roughly copied the graph and those numbers onto his whiteboard without knowing where that graph actually came from and doing any of the actual research on his own. I'm still trying to figure out what it means because it's very complex and confusing. Now, one interesting thing to note here is that even though there was an incredibly strong association between total cholesterol and cardiovascular disease mortality in the MRFIT screening study, was that there was a U-shape curved when it came to all-cause mortality, with both high and low cholesterol being associated with an increased risk of all-cause mortality, and of course, Eric Berg mentioned this in his video. Now, the other thing that you need to look at is that 
the total deaths from cholesterol, low cholesterol, is even higher than high cholesterol. So now Eric Berg is claiming that even though cholesterol is associated with cardiovascular disease mortality, that doesn't matter because low cholesterol is also associated with a significant increase in all-cause mortality. But like I said before, he didn't actually read the study, so again, he's misrepresenting the data. According to the authors of the MR Fit screening study, he's actually referring to the increase in all-cause mortality among those with low cholesterol was mainly as a result of an increased risk of death from cancer and other chronic diseases which have the potential to reduce serum cholesterol levels. So the authors of the study that Eric Berg is referring to but never bothered to read himself are suggesting that there is no causal relationship between low cholesterol and an increased risk of all-cause mortality, and rather, disease is causing their low cholesterol numbers, not the other way around. Of course, Eric Berg omits this information because not only is he biased, but he didn't even read the study in the first place, but why would he anyway? He, he's already made up his mind that butter is a health food. You should also keep in mind that this MR Fit study involved men aged 35 to 57. It's very common to find a reverse causation effect between cholesterol and all-cause mortality, especially when dealing with older people. This also happened in the Framingham study, where low cholesterol was associated with lower all-cause mortality for people under the age of 50, but over the age of 50, decreasing cholesterol levels were associated with an increased risk of all-cause mortality, and these authors also thought that this association was due to reverse causation. And that's another piece of information that Eric Berg is hiding from his audience. In the Framingham study, they found that low cholesterol was associated with a reduced risk of all-cause mortality for people under the age of 50. Again, he's just misrepresenting data to strengthen his bias and uninformed opinions, and Eric Berg even made an entire video on this topic where he used this misinformation to argue that bad cholesterol can make you live longer based on a few studies that have also found this correlation. Hey guys, in this video we're going to talk about how bad cholesterol, LDL, can actually make you live longer. If you're concerned about your cholesterol, if you have a problem with cholesterol, this video is very important to you. There has been a new analysis of earlier studies, okay, but I'm really curious on why they didn't make these conclusions the first time they evaluated these studies. But there's a new analysis, okay, of all these studies, and I'll put a link down below. I highly suggest that you read this on people that are over six years old. And basically they found that people with higher levels of LDL live longer and are not at risk of heart disease. So for once Eric Berg actually decided to provide evidence for his claims, he linked research and here it is. This meta-analysis found no association or an inverse association between LDL cholesterol and all-cause mortality risk in the elderly. Well, the problem here is that your cholesterol score in old age likely does not reflect your lifetime cholesterol score, and as I've mentioned before, reverse causation is likely at play here. Now, this meta-analysis did attempt to control for this factor by excluding terminal disease and mortality during the first years of observation, but this isn't perfect. Cancer can take many years to develop. There are also liver diseases that can affect cholesterol metabolism, but only start to adversely affect your health many years later. So what we need are studies that account for genetic variability in cholesterol to prove whether or not there is actually a causal relationship here. If low cholesterol does have a direct causal relationship with mortality, then those with genetically lower cholesterol levels should be at a greater risk of dying, and we have a very recent study from 2015 that did exactly that. So in this study, they used an LDL genetic risk score to overcome the issue of reverse causation, and up to 90 years of age in each age stratum 
individuals with high LDL genetic risk score had higher LDL-C levels, individuals with a genetic predisposition for longevity had significantly lower LDL genetic risk score, and in longitudinal analysis, high genetic risk score was associated with increased all-cause mortality in individuals above 90 years of age, with a 13% increased risk in individuals with the highest LDL genetic risk score. So there you have it, the association between low cholesterol and increased mortality risk is reverse causation. Genetic research confirms this with high LDL throughout your lifetime increasing your risk of dying and low LDL is associated with longevity. So Eric Berg isn't a very good pretend doctor. He claims that lowering your cholesterol is a bad thing. You shouldn't listen to your doctor because they don't know what they're talking about even though he went to a clown college and he advises you to keep your cholesterol levels high by eating things like butter, uh, which he thinks will make you live longer. So as you can see from my graph, you want to make sure that your cholesterol levels stay high so that you can live longer, and that means eating plenty of Scientologists, perhaps with lots of grass-fed butter. <laughs> Well, wait a second here. If any of that's true, then why do I have perfect heart health even though I'm eating plenty of meat and butter? Obviously, cholesterol and saturated fat is good for us if my heart is perfectly healthy. I think anyone with common sense knows that foods like meat, dairy, eggs, especially butter, are not heart healthy foods due to the saturated fat and cholesterol content, and even the research that Eric Berg himself has referenced proves that elevated serum cholesterol massively increases your risk of heart disease, but Eric Berg still tries to fool his audience by using himself as an anecdotal example. He recently had a coronary artery calcium test done and he used this to trick his audience. Hey guys, so I'm going to get a CAC test right now. It stands for coronary artery calcification scoring test. This is one of the, the absolute best tests to predict not just cardiovascular health, but mortality rates from all deaths. <laughs> it's incredible. So I wanted to get a test uh, and we're just gonna see what shows up, um, but it measures the calcification in the coronary artery, which is the main blood flow to the heart. So let's, let's see what happens. Now I got, a, I got a score of zero, zero. That's really good guys. That's actually, that's the ideal scene. Zero, I love it. So there's absolutely zero calcium in my arteries of the heart, okay? Because they didn't just measure the coronary, they measured uh, all the different areas. So this is very exciting. Well, good, Whew. don't have to worry about that. Um, so if your score is zero, um, that means that um, you have some, you don't have any damage in the arteries. So the coronary artery calcium scoring test is not the best test available for assessing heart disease risk. Eric Berg is either lying here or again, he's just severely misinformed. And I think there's an equal possibility that he's either lying or just plain stupid. According to the study published in the Journal of the American College of Cardiology, in patients with coronary artery disease, 39% had non-calcified plaques. The conclusion of the study was that the absence of coronary calcium does not reliably exclude the presence of significant atherosclerosis. So basically the test Eric Berg had done doesn't give an accurate picture of heart disease risk. He could have severely damaged arteries and not know it because the test he had done only detects calcified plaques not all plaques. And you should notice that on his test paper, 50%, one half of patients in his age group also have a coronary artery calcium score of zero. 
Also take note that in the study I just referenced, in patients where no coronary calcium was observed, 85% had atherosclerotic plaques that were detected with MSCT angiography. So even among men with a coronary artery calcium score of zero, there's still an extremely high probability that you still have atherosclerotic plaques in your arteries, putting you at high risk of heart disease, and Eric Berg knew going into this test that half of the men in his age group have a coronary artery calcium score of zero. So he basically just overplayed the significance and value of this test to try to fool his audience into thinking that a diet high in saturated fat and cholesterol that includes lots of butter is perfectly heart healthy. Uh, if Eric Berg wanted to prove that he has near perfect or perfect heart health, he would have gotten a CTA scan done. A CTA scan uh, measures both the non-calcified and calcified plaques in your arteries, so it's a much more reliable test. But Eric Berg will never get that test done, and he'd certainly never share the results of that test online, because that would prove his diet is giving him heart disease. So Eric Berg is a fraud and a fucking charlatan. He's giving his audience false information. But is that surprising coming from someone who, who went to school to follow a religious cult? So as you can all see from my test results, my coronary artery calcium score is zero, and I'm eating plenty of saturated fat and cholesterol every day. So there's no way Scientologists are giving you heart disease. <laughs> deserve to live. So I hope that gave you a good impression of Eric Berg and his overall content. He has a huge YouTube channel, he's uploaded thousands of videos on many different health topics, but I think it's clear that he's not a reliable source of information. Not only is he extremely biased, but he's also clearly very ignorant and misinformed, possibly deliberately so, and like his legal disclaimer says, you should only listen to real doctors. If anyone is telling you to eat butter because it's a, a health food that will help you live longer, whether they're a doctor or not, I hope you all have the common sense to not take their advice. I require more children. You must all bring me more children.